Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And you know, November is going to be a crazy, crazy, crazy month. D Disney is going to be launching Disney Plus for a very, very, very low price of $6.99 a month. And Netflix has been raising its price. And today it was announced that Netflix is now seeking $2 billion in extra funds in order to get more content. And we know that Netflix is trying to own everything it puts out there for the most part, but it also wants to license some seriously hard hitting stuff, predominantly The Office and friends which are now currently in limbo at netflix and both of those are like the top shows in fact the most streamed show on netflix is the office with good reason it's it's a fantastic series in the last two seasons despite a lot of people disliking it i feel we're fine post steve carell but that being said we go back here with when it comes to disney and netflix go back to uh to to february 14th 2018 so over a year ago now and disney says it's not trying to hurt or kill kill Netflix, right? And this is coming from a Polygon article, but the idea there is the same. It's that Disney was not looking at the time to hurt Netflix, but we also didn't know anything about Disney Plus at the time in order to give us the idea that it might hurt Netflix because here's what Yahoo Finance is reporting today. Uh, guess how many subscribers plan to cancel Netflix for Disney Plus? And this is a big, 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 big number here, but let's jump into it. All right, so in the decade since it first pioneered its streaming video platform, Netflix has held the field largely to itself. Several other would-be competitors, including Hulu, Prime Video, and Amazon, and others have tempted to wrest the lead from its digital grasp. But Netflix's relentless focus on spending to bulk up its library has thus far laid waste to all comers, which is true. You go, hey, is it on Netflix? If it's not, you go, oh, I'll just go without. I mean, there's a lot lot of people that do that. So it's a very interesting thing. Uh, now that could all change when multimedia behemoth Disney enters the ring. The company recently announced its Disney Plus service, which is set to launch on November 12th for $6.99 a month. With a trove of intellectual property going back decades and new blockbusters hitting theaters every year, the House of Mouse may be the rival that can finally give Netflix a run for its money. Not just the treasure trove of films, Right. We're, we're talking they're going to be putting out 7,500 episodes of television content on Disney Plus when it launches, like over 100 movies is also going to be included on that. And The Simpsons is going to be in that. We're talking like the first 30 seasons of The Simpsons is going to be in Disney Plus when it launches. That in and of itself is a very, very, very tempting offer at $7 a month or 70 bucks for the whole year. They're going to lock people into that $70 price tag uh, for as long as they possibly can and people are going to pay it. So Disney is looking to make a lot of money off this one. And they also are making original films specifically for Disney Plus, like the live action adaptation of The Lady and the Tramp, which looked God awful from what I could see coming out of CinemaCon. But anyway, uh, going on down here, talking about the Netflix killer, because that's been what it's talked about for a long time. This is where if you are a Netflix stockholder, you should be worried as hell because Netflix clearly is as much as 14 and a half percent of Netflix current U.S. subscriber base of 60 million said they are considering canceling the service in order to sign up for Disney Plus, according to a survey by the Streaming Observer in partnership with data analysis from MindNet Analytics. That would be a whopping 8.7 million customers that are going to cut out of Netflix and go to Disney Plus. Now, a lot of people out there I talked to were all like, ah, Disney Plus, it's gonna do okay, but it's not gonna be Netflix. And I'm like, you're full of crap, man. They have every animated movie, every Pixar movie on there, anything on there that's even remotely family related, even the family friendly content that's on Disney XD, like uh, the Star Wars shows or, or, or the Spider-Man shows, or hell, they give us Winnie the Pooh content, my daughter will go freaking crazy. Every family, family in this country is going to get access to freaking Disney Plus, especially at $7 a month or $70 for the year. That is like not even a question at this point. We are living in the age of, of digital streaming and you offer Disney related content, especially given how much Disney charges for its Blu-rays and everything else. Yeah, they're going to jump at that. Oh, you're telling me that I could buy Lion King on 4K for $25 or that gets me that gets me like four months almost over there at uh, Disney Plus. I'm going to take Disney Plus. People are going to do it. People are going to do it. Now, it says here this could be costly for Netflix. 
Uh, with its most popular plan being $12.99 a month, losing 14.5% of its U.S. subscriber base could cost the company more than $113 million monthly or $1.3 billion a year. And what it finds out now is 37% of Netflix customers said that they will try Disney Plus when it debuts. Another key finding is that parents are twice as likely to, uh, to non-parents to consider canceling Netflix for Disney Plus, which makes sense considering Disney's massive library of family-friendly programming. Which, like I said, that is what's going to control everything. You have the family-friendly programming. You have all of that stuff at play. That is going to be what ultimately is going to hurt Netflix. Netflix is going to be spending a lot of money on family-friendly content in order to keep people coming back in. But I think that's a bad call. Focusing on the more adult content, stuff like Altered Carbon or F is for Family or Big Mouth or uh, any of the, the, you know, like The Kingdom and any of those shows that are like crazy violent, crazy over the top. People love that kind of stuff. They talk about that kind of stuff and there's room for both. The key is to not become a clone of one another. The key is to be vastly different enough to where the audiences feel they need both to get their fix. Here's the thing though. Netflix is not going to be in any real danger anytime soon. Stranger Things season three is right on the horizon. July 4th is when that opens. It's going to be a big thing. That in and of itself spooked Sony and Marvel to push uh, to, to, to open Spider-Man Far From Home a couple days early as to not get in the way of Stranger Things season three. I'm not even worried about Netflix at all. They, they are going to be fine doing what they're doing, but that's still a large percentage, 14 and a half percent that could consider just getting rid of Netflix. And here's the thing with Netflix, Netflix, the more stories come out talking about how, as they expand into new markets, uh, that they're offering up a cheaper service. And the fact that here in the United States, the services, the price is increasing. I think I'm now paying 16 a month or 17 a month for my 4k package. I have the UHD top end 4k package for my Netflix, which I need to have because I am that type of person. But that's what I have, and but I'd still love it to be a little bit cheaper because I still spend the $12 a month for Hulu Plus without commercials. Now, if you're going to ask me if I'm going to get rid of one or the other, because I do feel personally that most people are going to pay for three services. I really do. I think it's going to be three services unless they bundle you in at a good price on a yearly rate or you're able to really kind of keep it going. So for one, Netflix is going to be the top Disney Plus and it's going to be either Hulu or Amazon. Now, Amazon right now, you could probably get rid of it and you're only really missing like The Tick and maybe The Marvelous Miss Maisel and a couple other things on there. They don't have a lot that really kind of brings you in, but they are going to be doing the Lord of the Rings series, which is going to be five season commitment and a, and a deal personally negotiated by Jeff Bezos with the rumored production budget of a billion dollars. So, you know, like three days for that dude. Uh, and then they're going to also do the Wheel of Time series, which is a 14 book fantasy series that is insane. I don't know how they're going to pull that one off, but that's what they're going to be doing. So there, if you are a sci-fi fantasy fan, and it's also if you like The Expanse, then Amazon's going to be for you. So I think uh, then you all, you have DC Universe that, that's already out there that I that I got uh, that's actually pretty good for what they offer. There's also going to be Warner Media is going to be doing their own streaming service, which is right now what's causing the problem with, uh, I think, with The Office and Friends. Uh, I know Friends specifically. The Office is an NBC Universal, but I don't know if that was ultimately owned by Warner Brothers because of how TV licensing works. Anyway, I, not to go too crazy into this, but th there is a lot that's going to be happening with this. So expect Disney to keep the price of Disney Plus low for a couple years because they really want to get between 60 to 90 million subscribers in the first five years. And if, if, if 8.7 million people cut Netflix and jump to Disney plus, that's going to significantly hit that, that number. I think they're going to hit it faster than five years. I know they're projecting for five years, but if there's one thing Disney's great at it's marketing, we're talking blanket marketing and it's going to be on everything. It's like, Oh, are you a Star Wars fan? Come check out The Mandalorian and Cassie and Andor and Clone Wars. Are you a Marvel Cinematic Universe fan? Well, come check out WandaVision and, and Falcon and Winter Soldier and Loki and whatever else we're going to do. Uh, Hawkeye. Like, they're, they're going to be giving you all of these things to get you in for that low, low price. And it is going to be a Netflix killer, 100%. Um, it's, it, and it's not going to take as long to get there. But like I said, you can make it work. There's an ecosystem 
for a few of these things, but if it really is going to boil down to pricing and Netflix, I know is trying to expand to the East and they're really trying to play that up and good on them for it. But if they don't start to like really take a look at the prices for the, the, the bulk U S North American subscriber base, they're going to end up probably losing it. Uh, predominantly because how many shows that are on Netflix and other countries are on their own individual streaming services here. That's a factor as well. Star Trek Discovery, whether you love it or hate it, is on CBS All Access here in the United States, but over in Europe, it's on Netflix. Doom Patrol and Titans, DC Universe exclusives here in the United States, they're on Netflix over in Europe. So we here as consumers are kind of getting shafted and people don't like getting shafted. So if here comes Disney as this white knighting streaming service, here's Bob Iger on a golden steed, a unicorn donned out in absolute, you know, pure bright light, or I don't know what kind of metaphor I'm trying to make here, but he comes rolling over that mountain and he's like, come with me, children. I shall give you quality entertainment at a low, low rate. All of your favorites here on one platform world over, not separated by different services here in the United States, then they're going to find themselves in a world of shit and an absolute world of shit. And I think it's going to be very fascinating to see where it goes because Disney's playing coy, but they know exactly what they're doing. And if these kind of surveys are coming out and people are saying 14 and a half percent are saying that they want to move on to something else, that they're not really happy with Netflix or they're willing to move on to a cheaper option, Netflix is going to have to basically adapt or it's going to run the risk of really hurting its its own user base, which is fiercely loyal after all these years. I've been a Netflix a Netflix instant user. I was an instant user back in 2007 before it just became Netflix, right? So I'm a loyal, loyal person. I have been for years. I don't plan on stopping. But at the same time, this Disney deal is too good to pass up. And if you asked me to choose, depending on the content available, because I have I have a kid and one on the way. If I had to choose, it probably would be Disney. And that's not what Netflix wants to hear. And I'm hoping that this gets them scared because they need to be competitive before they get undercut and then steamrolled because that could still happen. Disney doesn't mess around. Iger don't mess around. He's coming for Netflix and Reed Hastings knows it. So don't mess around, Reed, and make sure you get your consumers' backs, your loyal consumers' backs. If not, then you guys are all screwed. But anyway, what are your thoughts, your opinions on this? Let me know down in the comments below. My name is, of course, Matt Jarbo. This has been 3 Buck Theater. I really do appreciate you guys watching. Please thumbs up the video, subscribe, comment, and I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day.